is. Well, superannuation changes on the cards in 2018 with potential windfalls for consumers in a number of areas. Well, here to talk us through some of the ways you could benefit from the changes is Gemma Dale, Director of SMSF and Customer Behaviour at the NAB. Gemma, great to have you with us this morning and certainly to talk on an issue which a lot of people are still attempting to get their head around. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the changes that were announced in the May 2017 budget, mm -hmm. and they'll come into effect in July. And it's really impacting those who could, in fact, be set to get somewhat of a windfall mm -hmm. uh, from them. Just take us through the legislation sort of step by step so mm -hmm. that, you know, as we said, viewers at home might understand if, if they might feel those benefits. So the big one I think that might affect your viewers are those who are considering downsizing their homes. So this one's got quite a bit of press and it's interesting to think about. It's targeted at two different uh, major issues for politicians. So one is the property market. What are we going to do about first home buyers? How do we free up more properties for families and so on? And it's also targeting those who wish to contribute to superannuation and may not be able to otherwise. So it gets both of those groups at the same time. What it allows is a person who's over the age of 65, so the critical criteria, one, you need to be over 65, who says downsize, you don't technically have to downsize, you could upsize if you want to, but sell a principal place of residence, so it needs to be your home, can't be an investment property, and allows you to put up to $300,000 into superannuation. Now, a lot of those people over 65 won't be able to contribute to super under normal circumstances, and if they're over 75, they can't contribute at all, it doesn't matter what other criteria they might meet. So it means you can suddenly contribute those funds to super, which is really attractive. If you're a couple at 600,000, we know super is really concessionally taxed relative to almost all other forms of investment. So 600,000 for a couple that they can use from the proceeds of the sale of their home into super is quite attractive. Mm -hmm. Important things, one, don't enter into a contract of sale until the 1st of July 2018. If you do it before that, it won't mm -hmm. be uh, able to be captured by these measures. It's really important, don't do that. Uh, just delay it a little bit longer or put it on the market like, you know, end of June or something. Mm. And consider when you're putting that money into super, what other things it might affect. So it's become quite clear from the legislation that it has targeted those individuals who aren't currently eligible for an age pension. If you get the age pension, that money that you have freed up is still accessible for social security purposes. So for most people who get an age pension, if you freed up $600,000 in capital, you would no longer get the pension, you'd be over the assets test. So it's generally aimed at those who are wealthier. So we have at, at that end of the scale, we have, as you mentioned, those who are planning to downsize their home generally speaking, Ish. yes, <laughs> but also those who are looking to become first home buyers. Mm. Now, the, these are people at two very different ends of the spectrum, yes. because yeah. I have to admit, when I, when I saw that, you know, those looking to buy their first home, I got a little bit excited. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then, I mean, how do you have this, this policy that can impact people that are at such different mm. ends of the spectrum and they're at such different ends in terms of their, their financial planning, their, their financial future? How does that work? So the two measures that were captured effectively at the same time in the same budget but they're totally as you say aimed at different groups of people so the first home saver measure is an interesting one again it is not going to change the world for most people but what it allows you to do is to use superannuation as a mechanism for saving for your first home so it allows you to put uh, up to your cap each year and withdraw fifteen thousand dollars effectively a maximum of thirty from superannuation to provide for your first home. Critical things are that it can't include your superannuation guarantee, so your standard employer contributions, you can't withdraw those, they need to be preserved for your retirement. It can be a long way away if you're a first home uh, And so it really means that you can salary sacrifice or make personal mm. deductible contributions to super, or you can make an after-tax contribution to super, save it up to that limit of 30,000, 15 for each year, and then withdraw it. That's tricky though, right? So you've already paid tax on the money going in. That's 15% mm -hmm. contributions tax if it's a pre-tax contribution. The difference therefore needs to be between your personal marginal tax rate and that 15%. If you're on the highest marginal tax rate, so you're talking nearly 50%, the maximum you can save in tax over the two years, however many years you want to make it, it's about 10 grand. So, so it's not a huge amount of savings. The 30 is the maximum you mm. can withdraw. So $30,000 is not going to be the difference between a first home and no first home for the vast majority of people. And that $10,000 roughly maximum that you can save, 
that's targeted at people who are earning somewhere between 180 and 250 thousand dollars a year, which is not your average first home buyer, right? No, so absolutely. <laughs> they're very targeted measures. There are only going to be small groups of people who can benefit. But if you're in that situation, take advantage of it, right? Ten thousand dollars in savings is great. In terms of tax, most people would love to save $10,000 in your tax, but it won't apply to everybody. Absolutely. At this point in the year, a lot of people have their New Year resolutions there. Mm. They're getting their finances in order. So really appreciate you taking us through some of those changes, and particularly with that implementation coming into effect in July. Gemma Dale, thank you so much. My pleasure.